Следующий вопрос от Тоси. Recently, I have been interested in questions related to family, kin and connection with the ancestors. I would like to establish a connection with those ancestors whose programs are now influencing my life and ask them to share with me their algorithms so that I can obtain certain rights I need. This is where the question about the tools arises. There is a lot of information on the internet about rituals of invocation via the Christian egregor or through the use of Indian mantras. They write about boiled rice that should be brought to the cemetery while chanting prayers. The more rice, the better. When I hear about such rituals, I feel an internal resentment and even fear. Currently, I don't go to church, but I was baptized as a child. What other alternative and maybe even safer methods are there to establish such a connection? There are methods, of course. First, the safest alternative as well as an effective method is not to get distracted by traditions that have nothing to do with you. For instance, rice and feeding of the ancestors with it for the whole year is associated with the Eastern tradition, and not ours. The Hinduists and Chinese do that, meaning that everything originally came from that direction. If you are not related to any of them by blood, then these methods won't be right for you. You won't hear any response from your ancestors because they don't truly understand which ritual you are currently performing. Your ancestors most likely, if they used to inhabit Eurasian and European territories, up to the Ural, probably were of a Christian faith. And perhaps they were buried at Christian cemeteries. And they possibly might as well have truly been devoted Christians. If you want to establish a connection with your ancestor of the Christian or, for example, Islamic faith, then in this case, of course, Christian rites will be more effective and beneficial to you. But if you want to reach much older ancestors who used to live and form the winning algorithms in the pre-Christian epoch, then of course you should take a look at the gods they used to interact with. It is enough to know their place of residence. The gods are attached to the place, and so are the people. And through this place, like through the maternal womb, through her consciousness, they would communicate. If you know that, then digging out the historic information about which gods they worshipped on the specific territory will be much easier for you. If you don't possess such information, then meditative practices will be of great use to you. Immerse as deep as needed. Most importantly, it's not that you should read less, the internet, or including the internet, no, you should read a lot, obtain all the information possible, but avoid trying someone else's shoes on, understanding that they don't really fit and apparently come from a foreign culture and not your own. Again, if you know for sure. You need to rely on your own intuition, which is very important. Intuition never lets down those who seek, those who follow the magical path. Intuition is something that is practiced and it reveals itself, first of all, as the most important and perhaps, until a certain moment, the only tool of gaining knowledge. When you simply can feel mine, not mine, need it, don't need it, right, wrong, fits, doesn't fit, then signs will appear, which you will have to interpret. The ancestral algorithms that affect you are, of course, not only the winning ones, but also algorithms of defeat. Because we don't always win. Sometimes we lose, and this also gets recorded, recorded within the matrix of the kin, because a good kin tries to remember everything, including the algorithms of unsuccessful outcomes in order to pass this heritage along to their offsprings, including the ineffective algorithms, so that they don't waste their time on trying to achieve a result which is destined to failure within, for example, this bloodline, in this kin. You should know your ancestral tree very well. You should be familiar with several generations of your ancestors, going deep into your roots. In our school there is a course called The Power of the Kin, which includes four complete lectures, 
Part of them consists of information and another part is a meditative one, meaning that we approach the issue from both sides, with our mind on one side and our intuition on the other. If you put all this together, the effectiveness you are striving for, it may become your final result, the one you're looking for. Don't trust just anyone. Don't do that. There are rights that work and those that don't. There are rights that work for you and don't work for someone else. You must learn to certainly understand whether the ritual is right for you or not prior to initiating it. Use simple logic. If it is an Eastern ritual and there is no Eastern blood running through your veins, why should you use it? It won't establish any connection with your ancestors. It won't nourish them. It won't let them get any circulating energy because other forces support this type of belief system. It is a different tradition. Take, for instance, the Bardo tradition, the one that insists on feeding your ancestors with rice for a year. What is your relationship to it? Every nation has its own vision of hell and paradise, which was formed within its cultural tradition. This cultural tradition is written within your DNA. You should pull it out of there. And in no case should you follow a foreign one, because in the best case it won't give you any results at all. And in the worst case it will anger the spirits you are bothering in vain. It's better not to do that.